Have you been wondering how Apple's latest version of iOS compares to the latest version of Android? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is iOS 7 versus Android 4.3. In the last week alone, Android turned 5 years old and iOS underwent the single most important update in its history. The latest respective versions of the two platforms, 4.3 Jelly Bean and iOS 7, are now quite distant from their original versions. We figured what better time to put these two under the microscope and compare them than now. When iOS 7 was first announced and released to developers as a beta in June, the typical finger pointing ensued. But we're beyond that point. We're better than finger pointing and tattling, it's whiny and childish. So rather than focusing on who did what first, let's focus on what truly matters. Who does what best? At the surface, the two operating systems have a lot in common. Both are lunging towards minimalist design and beautiful typography. So we can't knock them for looking too much alike, but commend all the designers for making them look simple and beautiful. Lock screens, admittedly, look a lot alike. But Android uses widgets while iOS shows a beautiful stream of missed notifications. Both come with quick camera shortcuts as well. The iOS home screen is nothing more than a grid of icons and folders. It always has been. You can't put your icons just anywhere though. They're aligned left to right, top to bottom. 20 icons and folders can be added to each home screen before another is created. And 4 can be arranged along the static dock at the bottom. Folders are now paginated without a hard limitation on how many apps can be added. Android is still utilizing the same old interface it's been using all along as well. Five home screens with the default set to the middle page. It's a 4x4 grid that offers 16 slots for either app shortcuts, folders, or widgets. Widgets and icons can be added by opening the app drawer, long pressing, and dragging to the desired location on the home screen. And folders by dragging an icon atop another icon and releasing. The dock on the bottom of the Android home screen is also composed of four user-definable slots. Pull down from the top of the display on both platforms to reveal notifications. Notification Center on iOS 7 was given a significant facelift with the Today View for Calendar and Stocks. Dismissing notifications in Android, however, is much easier. Simply flick left to right or hit the Dismiss All button. In Notification Center, you must choose each section of notifications at a time by hitting the tiny clear button twice. Android still does notifications better. The status bar indicates that you have notifications waiting to be attended to and notification previews are much less obtrusive. iOS's banner notifications continue to cover UI elements, though a simple upward flick will dismiss the banner. But the notifications are still disjointed. Badge notifications are very loosely tied to what's in Notification Center. But a badge indicating pending notifications for a specific app does in no way entice us to pull down the notification shade. It's still not unified in any way. For quick controls, pull down from the top of the display in Android with two fingers or tap the icon in the upper right corner of the notification shade. On iOS, Command Center is accessed by pulling up from the bottom of the display. Android's panel looks better and is implemented a little better, but Command Center actually has more toggles and controls. iOS now uses a bright and vibrant color palette with white space design, meaning it's very light filling with tons of whites, pastels, and neons. Android is similar in that it uses a sort of neon blue as an accent color with thin lines and typeface. But its primary color for backgrounds, buttons, and other elements is black. Both have their own live or dynamic wallpapers and iOS 7 is all about layers. Sort of like ogres, or parfaits, your choice. The parallax effect as well as the transparency of Control Center and Notification Center create dimension. Something Android does to an extent but not as noticeably. At times they feel like polar opposites. Other times they feel very much alike, as if years down the road the two could become nearly indistinguishable. But there's a trick Android has that iOS doesn't. If you don't like how iOS 7 looks, tough cookie. Swap your wallpaper and get over it, or jailbreak when it's available. On Android, just change the launcher, swap the icon pack, apply a theme, or install a different ROM. Android, for the most part, has ultimately been about function over form, whereas iOS is generally the opposite. Android has only recently been considered by many to be fairly user-friendly, but iOS has always had a reputation for simplicity. That penchant for simplicity has come at the expense of sheer function, sadly. Everything is locked down and sandboxed, forcing users to jump around the OS to do simple tasks. For those who value the utmost function, Android has more to offer. Information such as pictures or links can be shared between multiple applications without ever having to return home or task switch. 
hit the universal share button and a list of compatible applications will appear. On iOS, there is only a preset number of applications and services you can share from within any app. For instance, if you want to share a picture to Instagram from the gallery on Android, simply navigate to the picture, hit share, and select Instagram. From iOS, you will need to leave the Photos app, open Instagram, compose, press the gallery button, find the photo again, and then proceed with the process. The only reason I can share to Buffer from within Feedly using an iPhone is because Feedly has hard-coded Buffer support into the app itself, which is nice. But if I want to share something from within Safari to Buffer, say a link and a quote from the article, I have to copy the link, switch to Buffer, switch back to Safari, copy the quote, switch back to Buffer one more time, paste, and Buffer. From Android, to do this from Chrome, I simply have to copy the quote, hit Action Overflow, select Add to Buffer, paste the quote, and Buffer. No app switching, no nonsense. And lest we forget, Android has the utmost utility on the lock screen and home screen. Widgets for at-a-glance information from your favorite apps. I can read my entire RSS feed on Android without ever actually opening an app. There is no at-a-glance information on iOS unless you count the dynamic icons, such as the standard clock or calendar app, but they're so small their utility is limited. And that gets us to multitasking. Before, multitasking on iOS worked but it was clunky, poorly implemented, and made it a chore to close applications. Androids wasn't much better back in the day until Matias Duarte came along and added the card view multitasking with swipe gestures to close. Apple also implemented a card view in the task switcher with gestures for quickly closing apps. Aside from the fact that most Android phones have a dedicated key for recent apps, the two are virtually neck and neck for task switching now. Kudos, Apple. Their respective ecosystems and application catalogs can't go unstated either. Those play a major part in functionality as well. Google has a broader online ecosystem which can be accessed on either platform, almost in its entirety. Gmail, Calendar, Contacts, Google Plus Drive, Play Movies and TV, YouTube, and much more. But using Google services on its own platform is rewarding. You don't get that level of integration or polish offered by the native Gmail app on Android with Gmail on iOS. Apple's ecosystem has the heavyweight iTunes, iCloud, and one of the richest selections of digital content available. Both are easy to get sucked into and difficult to get out of, but we can try to break down the massive application support for both. Major titles and developers often provide support for both platforms. As of July, Google Play offered over 1 million applications and games. Apple's App Store reportedly passed the 950,000 app threshold just two days ago. If you can tell a difference in the quality or quantity of either just by sifting through them, you're not human. iOS typically has more game support but Android Store is also filled with lots of customization software, wallpapers, icon packs, themes, launchers, etc. Then there's Siri and Google Now. Both are easy to access and tied to the home button, but the general consensus is that Google Now is more useful in many ways. Both can be used to compose emails, texts, and make requests about the area around you, where to shop, where to get food, movie times, etc. But Google Now provides information without user input. It learns you. And if you don't like speaking to your phone, you can simply type a request into Google Now. But Siri's latest tricks, such as hardware control, is certainly noteworthy. Finally, performance. iOS really hasn't had performance problems ever, of which we can recall at least. Sure, iOS 7 may not run well on your iPhone 4, or iOS 6 may have bogged your 3GS down, but iOS has always been very well polished and offered a buttery smooth experience on relevant hardware. That's more that can be said for Android, which was once synonymous with lag and stutters. Jellybean has all but solved that problem. Project Butter has dramatically changed the performance of Android. It's smooth and now offers similar performance to what many have grown to expect from other platforms, like Windows Phone or iOS. So we leave you with a question to end all questions. Jellybean or iOS 7? Normally, I would give you a definitive answer, but that wouldn't be fun, now would it? So we'll say this. For simplicity and reliability, we give it to iOS 7, but for customizability, functionality, and appearance, Android Jelly Bean takes the cake. That's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos like this one in the future, be sure to let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and subscribing. Find us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Pocket Now. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time.